in the warming up lap comes to an end for this 18 lap 250 cc dutch tt harada on pole kato alongside him kato leads the championship ahead of harada but only by 10 points it feels as if it should be more than that after kato has won five grand prix out of six this year but his 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 worst grand prix was in italy when he slithered down the field and it was wet there, of course. Cato taking up second, Malandri in third, but Jeremy McWilliams on the outside of the front row, the number 99 machine with the Ulsterman in control. 32-man field, everybody getting a little bit all messed up at the back of the grid, and they are going to have to hurry this up, because otherwise the temperature will rise all sorts of people in all sorts of places there's a marshal still trying to work things out i hope that we can get things sorted or are we just going to have a green and let them all go down to turn one we certainly hope so they're holding them on the grid still harada on pole getting ready for what could be the whole shot can the abrilia get the better of the honda no harada is nowhere honda gets the drop harada is nowhere as they go back and it's going to be third place for Jeremy as he goes down to turn one. The two Yamahas in fourth and fifth position. Cato leads though from Marco Melandri, from Jeremy McWilliams, from Cheryl Uzi it is in fourth position, from Matsudo in fifth place. Brilliant start for the Malaysian. Through from the third row of the grid, Cheryl Uzi. Going like the clappers with the fluorescent top to his crash helmet there in fourth position. Robbie Rolfo then in sixth position. Porto in seventh position. And one of the Aspar Aprilias there as well. Well, Alex Debon? Yes, it can't be Fonzie Nieto because he hasn't started the race. Fonzie broke bones in both feet in a free practice, so he has decided it's not worth the pain. They've got to be so circumspect around these first few corners. The tar choice will be maybe coming into, their, into its own, or will the riders be thinking, oh no, I've gone the wrong way. Cato leading, but it looks as if he is making the log jam for everybody else. Look at Melandri, the orange crash helmet there in second position. They are so smooth as they go onto the back section. Two men who don't like wet weather racing at the front at the moment. The track is drying. We hope we'll have information up from this. Harada, just going through your picture. Where did he go down to? Way down in 15th place as Jeremy looks to follow Melandri through. No, Kato says no, thank you. Not this Melandri time. is going through. On the brakes for the right-hander. Nice and neat for Marco Melandri, who won here on a 1-2-5 in 98. All sorts of different lines been taken around there. Everybody seemingly making a clean first lap. Porto in front of Rolfo now. So then, Lee, and it looks well, like De Bond trying to stuff up the inside of Robbie Rolfo, who's coming off two consecutive podiums. Melandri leads from McWilliams now in second place. Cato now in third position. The two Yamahas holding station and doing a sterling job, but in being infiltrated by that Aprilia, by that, sorry, Yamaha. Oh, and going go through is Jeremy. Up past the works Aprilia. McWilliams leads in Holland. Say that again, please. McWilliams continues to lead I in Holland. I enjoyed that. <laughs> and, Steady, hopefully, Jeremy. and hopefully we'll be able to say it many a time, but it's a long way to go. We haven't even completed lap one. 18 laps to go. Yeah, a little bit of flag waving at the start. We'll pack that up for the moment. It's McWilliams and Melandri. Cato looking tentative and Porto looking like he's going to push past Matsudo any second now. Who was that stuffing it up hard on the inside of the chicane? It was... One of the, one of the antenna tres bikes. It was either De Gea, who knows what. Mean, it was De Gea uh, going up. In he's always position. been a good boy in the wet. Remember him on the Medinads and on his Super Sport bike. David De Gea in eighth place. There is Jeremy leading this race from teammate Marco Melandri, 99, leading number five. The Aprilia is in control with the works Aprilia of Marco Melandri, second place. Championship leader, Dajira Kato in third position as we speak, leading that championship by 10 points. Ulsterman leading, Ulsterman in the commentary box, Adrian Coates, can Jeremy do it? I'm confident Jeremy's going to be able to do it this weekend, fingers crossed. You can see now immediately that he's pulling away from the group and taking Melandri with him. So, I mean, Jeremy's confident out there. And so long as, as he's rubbed his shamrock this morning, then he'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a question of tar choice as well. We haven't got the tar choice coming up from Dunlop. We will get it very soon. But a track, Adrian, that dries out very, very quickly. Except for last year, whenever it come on a deluge in the fourth lap or something. But, uh, yeah, um, renowned. I think because of all the banking, and it has been pretty warm all week, um, it's definitely going to dry out quick the track. You've ridden this track in, on, on your machine this weekend on behalf of the European 250cc Championship. What's it been feeling like in the dry at least? The track's really, really good. Um, 
the surface is really smooth. There's a few places there's some ripples, but I mean the grip was really, really good. We've got David Checker here on the number 42 Honda. He looks as if he is holding up everybody else uh, from fifth position. Uh, Alex Hoffman in there and Katja Punsken as well, the German lady rider, going like the wind but not as quick as Jeremy McWilliams got himself on the podium here back in 1999. The tyre choice has just arrived and it's literally still being filled in. Julian and Adrian pouring over the Dunlop tyre choice from all of the riders and we can see that Jeremy is on an intermediate front and an intermediate rear tyre. So fingers crossed and we hope that it doesn't rain I look out of our commentary box and I can see that there is a little bit of blue sky appearing through the mottled, the very mottled cloud above us here. Could this be the day? Julian, we can only pray that it doesn't rain. Oh, oh. David Checker down out of the chicane. David Checker down out of the chicane and doing the green cross code to try and cross the racetrack whilst everybody steams through. Vital pioneers just come in from Dunlop. Jeremy has, if you like, the driest combination on. Inters. Front Here's the rear. crash. Here's the crash of David Checker getting completely sideways. Robbie Rolfo somehow gets away with that one. He must have rubbed some sort of a shamrock this morning, Robbie Rolfo. So lucky to get away with that one. He got rubbed by a bike in midair, did Robbie there? Right. Everybody's on wet fronts and light wet rears, except Jeremy McWilliams, who's on Inter's front and rear. The Ulsterman has gambled. At the moment, it's paying off. X901, el máximo dentro, el mínimo fuera. Connect to Eurosport.com Game Zone and take part in a great Suzuki Grand Prix game. You'll be able to take advantage of your racing skills to find the best path and be the fastest on the track. The best riders can win a fantastic Suzuki GSX-R600. Suzuki scooters and Team Suzuki goodies must also be won. So be the fastest at the Suzuki Grand Prix game on Eurosport.com Game Zone. This is Dry. It's a four CD set with the 60 most exhilarating open air tracks ever written. Classic artists like Eric Clapton, John and Vangelis, Fleetwood Mac, The Christians and Christa Burr. It just hits the road and keeps going. My name is Luca. But you can't buy it in the shops. You have to order by phone. To get your copy, call now. Inside, we know great music when we hear it. Jerry McWilliams continues to lead the Dutch TT and he's extending his lead. It's up now to 18 seconds over Emilio Alzamora and then another 16 seconds behind the Spaniard. There's another Spaniard, David De Gea on the Antenna Trez Yamaha. The teenage Frenchman, Sylvain Guintoli, fourth. Hey, it's been a good day for France so far, hasn't it? As we look at the uh, Jeremy going round the outside of his teammate, Klaus Noles who is uh, down the order somewhat, Klaus circulating in 18th place. He started out of pit lane the same as Jeremy. We don't know whether they had the same tyres on. Uh, we don't have that information. I'm assuming not at the moment, for the benefit of... Uh, Tell you what, that's, uh, we're going to get a dry 500 race, aren't we now? Not unless there's that big black cloud coming over the back of the car. Adrian grandstand. Coates, I thought you'd be more optimistic than that. I really would after your uh, second place qualifying in the European Championship earlier today on uh, Mr. Clive Paget's Honda. Mm. You second in the Championship as well at the moment? Second in the Championship by four points. So. And, the, and the British Championship they'll be racing in tomorrow? We're leading that by nine, so this the job tomorrow is just uh, to try and score some points and, and uh, damage limitation. Yeah, so you're... 
those of you at home in the UK listening at the moment, if you're going to Thruxton tomorrow for the British Championship race, a slightly truck-lagged Adrian Coates will be there on the back of the grid as well. He'll have to start from there, of course, because he hasn't done any qualifying, what he's been out to in the Europeans. Emilio Altamora continues on with his works Honda and it may have got a little brighter in some places there is a bit of a small cloud over there but at least it's high at the moment go away small dark cloud we all say in this commentary box three laps to go just a little over 10 miles to go for Jeremy McWilliams who continues to lead this race his lead over Altamora is 17 seconds there is Jeremy the sunshine falling down upon this racetrack uh, where Jeremy is, the concentration written all over his eyes, all over his face, and these laps, Adrian, will take a very, very long time in his mind. But Jeremy's strong enough in mind now that he knows he'll, he'll not slow up, he'll be doing two nines to the end, um, and uh, that, that's, that's what he'll do, that's what he'll have to do. One of the hardest things is to try and not think about, you know, I'm going to win this, this is my first Grand Prix, but I don't know, I think Jeremy's long enough for right now that they'll have the situation under control there is David De Gea on the red Yamaha he is in third position he's coming up behind one of the wild card riders it is Arnold Lichens he is already being passed there is David De Gea's team boss uh, Luis Dantin, former 250 podium man, never mind rider, podium man from Spain, going on to now run a very, very tight ship in both the 250 and the 500cc classes. And winning Grand Prix, I hasten to add, in the 500cc class with Norik Abe. We'll be seeing him up and coming in just under an hour's time here in Athen. Julian, don't think I can bear to watch. Oh, I'm getting a bit twitchy, twitchy here. So I'm going to talk about David De Gea rather than Jeremy Williams, I think, for a, a short while. Uh, whew. The last British winner of a Grand Prix was Ian McConaughey in 1986 in the 80s CC race at Silverstone. A race held on a Saturday, by the way, and not on the Sunday. Ooh. I watched it down at the inside of Stoke Corner in the company of the late great Jeff Johnson, uh, multiple TT winner and uh, one Barry Sheen. Can, can a bit of coincidence come to the fore today with another Saturday <laughs> race? Oh, that's, that, that's stretching it a bit. Just a little less than two laps to go now. Just a little less than seven miles to go. Jeremy has a lead over Emilio Althamora of 17 and a half seconds. The Ulsterman all in control. There is Jeremy's teammate being lapped by the second place man, Emilio Althamora. Klaus Nolo is back in 18th place. Katja Punsken further down the order and only less than half a second of some points, Julian. Yeah, she's 0.4 of a second behind Buzvelt, one of the wild guards. So Katja could continue to add to her reputation for being a tough cookie. Uh, by, uh, she got her first point in the wet race in Mugello, of course. So, uh, just behind him, I had David De Gea, who rode, as one Spanish journalist put it to me, the last lap of his life. To, if you're from deepest, darkest Mercia in southern Spain, going home to your village when you've been beaten by a girl would not be something you'd want to do. A quick girl at that. Oh, Catch is not a mug. She's proved to everybody she deserves to be in this paddock. No question. Jeremy McWilliams coming past. It is Randy de Punier's Aprilia. It's a black Aprilia passing red, white and blue French. You keep the France Aprilia. The suspension working over time. The tyres have still got the life in them. The Dunlops have been so good to Jeremy this afternoon. The fastest lap of the, personal best lap of the race being set by number 50 there. That is Sylvain Guintoli. He is in fourth position. A personal best for Guintoli. And Jeremy continuing on doing 209s. And that 17 and a half second lead safe at the moment. Coming back towards into the chicane for the penultimate time. This is going to be the longest lap 
in Jeremy McWilliams' career. I'm desperate to talk about anything but Jeremy. Tetsuya Harad is doing two-minute fours. He's broken Rossi's lap record, but he's way down the order. We follow the last six kilometres, three and three-quarter miles of the Dutch Grand Prix. Up behind Alex Hoffman becomes the Ulsterman, Jeremy McWilliams. And we've got a faller from Katja. Katja is down on the penultimate oh. lap, right outside the points. The German is going nowhere. What a shame, so close and yet so far. Still a fighter, though. Still a fighter. No, she was fighting for a point there. She decked it. Katia's out. That's her teammate, number 66, Alex Hoffman, who Jeremy McWilliams has just passed. Ooh, one and a half miles, two miles left for the first British winner of a Grand Prix for 16, 15 years and more. I didn't catch him this morning. I was trying to make my, work, my way over to the motor home this morning to wish him good luck, and I was... I would put myself off because I said, if you do well in the race, can you come up to the box? And I thought, no, Toby, don't say that because it would put the mockers on him. I know, and I know that Robert Fleck is here. And do not forget Robert Fleck with regards to Jeremy McWilliams' career. Jeremy has been in the 500 class with QUB on the rock. He then got onto the Honda in 250. He then got onto the Aprilia in 250. Poor Robert fell off the pit wall when Jeremy got his first ever podium in 98. Careful, Jeremy, you've got a few more miles to go. And oh. what a way to go to the Donington Park British Grand Prix next weekend. We have got a British leader of this race and soon a British winner, Jeremy McWilliams on course. Oh, this is wonderful. This is a bit of history. Fingers crossed. Adrian's can't bear to watch. I almost can't bear to watch. Steady, Jeremy. Steady. You've got, you've got 17 seconds and more in hand. He's been showboating since halfway round the lap. Plenty of Union Jacks around. Lots of cheers in the crowd. And can you blame him for that clenched fizz? And who can say that the old dogs have gone past their time? 37 years old is Jeremy McWilliams, and he is going to win the Dutch TT 2001. If you haven't got goose pimples, you have no soul. I may have lots of words, but I think in a moment I'm going to run out of them. Jeremy McWilliams wins the Dutch TT 2001. Fantastic stuff. I don't believe that. Oh. Brilliant for the number 99 machine. Oh. History has been made, and thank goodness I was here to witness it. Two more winners coming through. Emilio Alzamora, first Rostrum on the 250s in second place. Great ride from him. Gambled on slicks, it worked. And another... I'm very happy about this to see David De Gea, who slaved his guts out on the Medina. He's going to be close as well with Sivian Gintoli. Oh, it's a race for third. It could be close. Gintoli going up on the inside. He's going to be close. They almost touch, but they somehow get away with it. David De Gea from Spain, from Andalusia, gets his first ever 250cc Grand Prix podium. <laughs> Everybody is a winner once more on the podium here in Holland. And Gintoli in fourth. He's a winner as well. There's an Ulster flag, and I just want to have a serious note. Monday is the anniversary of when we lost Joey last year. So Jeremy McWilliams in fine style, putting everything and all of the ghosts to rest. McWilliams is victorious for the first time and hopefully not the last in his 250 career. He got a new team a couple of weeks ago by moving squads to Dieter Stafford's squad, who is no fool, I hasten to add. He won two Grand Prix last year with Ralph Foreman and he's going to win two this year with Jeremy. Keep in touch. Let's watch Melandry. Adrian reminded us a moment ago what a brave and good ride this was on wet time from the start. Sixth place for Marco Melandri, currently third in the championship. That is a heroic little ride there. And we're still waiting for the championship leader, Daijira Kato, to come across the line. He is way, way down the order, not having a good day at the office. But the person who has smoked them, the best 250 rider in the world today is Jeremy McWilliams. And if he didn't have any rubber left, he's got none now. Adrian, the goose pimples were going on your forearm about two laps from home. Yeah, but I had every confidence in him from the start of the race, so... I, uh... <laughs> Adrian had to leave the room, by the way, as, I, as Jeremy crosses the line. Oh, my goodness me. Here is the championship leader, Daijira Kato, coming across the line in 11th position. The championship leader, the winner of five Grand Prix this year, is in 11th when McWilliams was first. I think I need to say no more. I've just tried to bribe Adrian Coach to commentate while I went down to stand underneath the last but he's having none of it. He's going to go. Uh, I'm going to go in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I've done six years of Grand Prix up here in this Eurosport commentary box. He was so close at Donington. He was so close 
also here a couple of years ago, but this is a racetrack that suits him. It is a road, formerly a road racing track, and he has gone to the top of it today. Oh, found a flag of Ulster, I think, halfway around the lap, some Union Jacks there as well. And Emilio Alzamora, another brave man, dreadful qualifying, appalling qualifying, said, bleep it went for the big gamble on slicks having qualified 17th toby yes and he has got second place by far by far his career best and that looks like a few british tourists having a nice time on a foreign holiday Cato still leads the championship though toby 25 sorry 15 points now the gap so Cato finishing 11th, Harada non-scoring this afternoon after going for a tar gamble that didn't pay off. McWilliams is 25 points, brings him up the order somewhat to sixth position. That's a one-place improvement in the championship for Jeremy. What a day, history unfolding in front of you. Jeremy McWilliams, victorious in Holland, and this is going to be some celebration tonight. I think there might be a sore head or two, if not in this paddock, if not back home in Ulster. I want some drink in this commentary box. Any second now to celebrate that one. Uh, very pleased, I say it again, for David De Gea, who uh, slaved away bravely last year on the Medina as for not a lot of reward or regard, in my opinion. And uh, that is nice to see that uh, a, a real gutsy rider like him getting his just desserts. Toby said it after the 125 race, all of them winners on that rostrum. And I'm going to echo his thoughts and apply it to the two to the 250, the 250 uh, rostrum. McWilliams, the winner of the Dutch TT from Emilio Alzamora and David De Gea. Ulster from Catalonia from Mercia. The Frenchman, the teenager, Guintoli, gets a splendid career best fourth. Bataini fought through to fifth. Melandri heroic on shredded wet tyres in sixth. Luca Boscoscuro seventh. And the European champion, Chiarello, comes through in eighth place. You're on him over Dal and David Thomas, competing the good day for Spain in ninth and tenth. Cato, the championship leader, got 11th from Alex Hoffman. Randy the Punier, Sebas Porto, and the wildcard Busvelt just holds on to his point because Katja Punskan, while attacking him, crashed out at the chicane on the penultimate lap. Well, two fantastic Grand Prix live up to that 500s.